Hi, I'm Graham. Welcome back to Man V Film. It's time for another top 10 movies that you can watch this month on Amazon Prime. And I know we all have a lot of time on our hands as we are in current lockdown, afraid for the oncoming apocalypse of the coronavirus. So here's some things that may distract you from the troubling times outside. Let's get started. Number 10, The Grey. In Alaska, a team of oil workers board a flight home However, they cross a storm and the aeroplane crashes. Only seven workers survive in the wilderness and John Ottaway, who is huntsman that kills wolves to protect the workers. Shortly after that, they learn that they are surrounded by a pack of wolves and Ottaway advises that they should seek protection in the woods. Joe Carnahan directs the hell out of this brilliant Liam Neeson movie and it kind of was around about that time he was doing all those old man action movies and this is something a hell of a lot different. It's a lot more to say, it's more starkly shot than most of those other ones and for me it has a big emotional resonance at the heart of it that really drives the movie forward. Number 9, Dark Encounter. A year after the mysterious disappearance of an eight-year-old girl, we meet her grieving family as they return home from their memorial service in a small town. Later that evening, strange lights appear from the nearby forest and the family is exposed to an inexplicably strange phenomenon that rattles them to the core. The origin of the lights appear to be visitors from another world that seemingly terrorise the family. Dark Encounters is a bit of an odd one to really recommend. I liked it. It has some silly facets about it, but I felt for the majority of the movie it had some really strong horror-centric pieces. I had no idea where the story was going. And like I said, the ultimate finale is a little bit... Uh, how do you rationalise that? But for me, the journey to get there was a hell of a lot of fun. Very atmospheric, very creepy. Uh, although it does boil from a lot of notable science fiction movies, I still think it's worth checking out. Number 8. The Midnight Meat Train. A photographer's obsessive pursuit of dark subject matter leads him into the path of serial killer who stalks late night commuters, ultimately butchering them in the most gruesome ways imaginable. I really like Midnight Meat Train. It seems to be one of those movies that came out and was forgotten about and is very rarely ever mentioned. Starring Bradley Cooper as the photographer and Vinnie Jones as Mahogany, this silent serial killer that stalks the late night subway trains. This has moments of brutality but it's also about a man achieving goals that he never thought he'd achieve and then ultimately forsaking them for an obsession, for something that he cannot switch off from. He disregards everything in his life because of this one pursuit. And that's one of the facets of the movie that I really lock onto every time I watch it. I think it's really good and particularly gory. Number seven, Nightmare City. TV's news reporter, Dean Miller, waits at the airport for the arrival of a scientist that he is about to interview. There, an unmarked military plane makes an emergency landing. The plane's doors open and dozens of zombies burst out, stabbing and shooting the military waiting outside. Miller tries to let the people know of this event, but General Murchison of the Civil Defence will not allow it. Umberto Lenzi's kind of low-budget, shoddily-looking zombie movies is one of those Italian copycat movies from the early 80s, late 70s that I just have a hell of a lot of fun watching. Now, you will know almost immediately whether this movie is for you or not. If it's something that doesn't interest you, quickly turn off. It's not going to get any better than that. If you like your genre movies, your Italian horror movies, your movies that are a little bit different, this one is definitely fun watching. And that ending is, well, it's an ending. I'd love to know your thoughts on that one. Number six, Power Rangers. High school outcasts stumble upon an old alien ship where they acquire superpowers and are dubbed the Power Rangers. Learning that an old enemy of the previous generation has returned to exact vengeance, the group must harness their powers and use them to work together and save the world. I was never a fan of the Power Rangers. It was never something that I watched or even took notice of. I, I briefly knew what they were, 
didn't interest me. I was dragged along to see this when it came onto the big screen and I found something that was rather enjoyable. There is some good filmmaking on show here as well. The movie's a little over long but there is a fantastic sequence involving a car crash that is just wonderfully shot. It's entertaining, it's got Brian Cranston in it as well and it's just generally a fun time in front of the TV screen. Number five, Borley Rectory. Borley Rectory is an animated documentary chronicling what became to known as the most haunted house in England. The legends attached to the rectory at Borley are famed paranormal investigator Harry Price's subsequent investigations of them. Caught in the public's imagination during the late 20s, in time becoming one of the world's most notorious ghost stories. Borley Rectory is a documentary with a difference. It is almost reenactments of famous cases and moments of supernatural entities uh, making themselves known. It's done in a really weird and strange style, most akin to, say, Sky Captain in the world of tomorrow, where it feels very odd and otherworldly. It fits it perfectly and it creates a, a kind of documentary that gives you more of a driving narrative, gives you more of an entertainment kind of complex by creating these spooky and creepy scenes and it's just something very different if you're looking for something a little unique. Number four, The Negotiator. In the midst of an elaborate conspiracy, an expert negotiator is driven to the edge when he's framed for the murder of his partner, as well as embezzling money from his department's pension fund. His only chance to prove his innocence is to take hostages himself, acquire the services of another expert negotiator, and find out who's running the conspiracy before it's too late. Directed by F. Gary Gray, this is one of those late 90s movies that I love going back to. It never does anything super fantastic. It just tells a really tight, nice, condensed story and it tells it really well. It's one of those kind of adult thrillers that you don't really get made too much and it's one that every time I throw on, I just forget how good it really is and it draws me back in again with these battling negotiators ultimately trying to get to the truth of a problem. Number three, Necrotronic. Down in his luck, sewage worker Howard North discovers he is part of a secret sect of magical demon hunters called the Necromancers. When Howard finds out about his evil demon Finnegan's dark plans, he sets out to defeat her. I was really impressed with Necrotronic when I saw it as part of the Fright Fest. I found it to be a wonderful piece of genre cinema that just had me laughing out loud, even though it was a pastiche of all these different kind of famous movies, Ghostbusters, Harry Potter, uh, The Matrix, other kind of things like that. And it takes good parts from that and creates something really fun and entertaining. I love the humour on show here. I thought the special effects were excellent and it's one of those ones that you could easily zip by not realising how much fun you're missing out on. Necrotronic is a must watch if you haven't already checked it out. Number two, the Aeronauts. In 1862, pioneering meteorologist James Glashner teams up with daredevil balloon pilot Amelia Raines to advance human knowledge of the weather. They fly higher than anyone in history, while their voyage to the very edge of existence helps the unlikely pair find their place in the world. They face physical and emotional challenges in the thin air, as the ascent becomes a fight for survival. I really like the Aeronauts. It has kind of two storylines going on here. We get the, the real-time story of them up in the air, travelling to the outer atmosphere to try and get readings, and a kind of flashback story of why they are there at this point in their life. Everything on the balloon is wonderfully exciting edge of the seat stuff. Everything not is kind of a step back and you're just waiting for them to get back on the balloon. But it's really fun, it's quick, it's entertaining and it just draws you in and it can be fun for all the family. Edge of the seat, thrill ride kind of stuff. Number one, Midsummer. Danny and Christian are a young couple with a relationship on the brink of falling apart. But after the family's tragedy keeps them together, a grieving Danny invites herself to join Christian and his friends on a trip to the once-in-a-lifetime midsummer festival in a remote Swedish village. What begins as a carefree summer holiday in the land of eternal sunshine takes a sinister turn when the insular villagers to invite the guests to partake in the festivities that render the pastoral paradise increasingly unnerving 
and viscerally disturbing. Midsummer is about two and a half hours long and it is captivating the entire time. Uh, the thematics are all about the emotional breakup of a relationship and how you cope with those final death throes of it and it's encapsulated by this really strange and weird world that we are placed inside. The constant daylight is unnerving. It's weird, it's strange, these perfectly blue skies that constantly coat this village in sunshine are just off-putting. There's no darkness, there's no dusk, there's no dawn, it's just weird and it's just one of the facets of the movie that just draws you in. The characters are immense and this is a really hard movie to get through. And it does have some moments of uh, beautifully grotesque horror as well. Midsummer is a terrific movie that I found captivating. I absolutely loved it. Made it onto my top 10 movies of the year list. But it's not for everyone. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. There we have it, the top 10 movies that you can watch this month. I hope you find something here that really makes your time in lockdown fly by a little more. Of course, I'm always looking for recommendations. So if you have one for me, let me know in the comment box below. And I'll see you next time on Man B Film.